It's a beautiful day in the neighborhood. Reaction beam, yo, 197? Day in the neighborhood, my brothers and sisters. Starting either this coming up Saturday or Sunday, I got a brand new type of video I'm going to be putting out every week on our channel. Now, the reason I say either Saturday or Sunday because you know we got to work Mr. Ballin' in. And sometimes he put his videos out on Saturday, sometimes he put them out on Sunday. So, whatever day he don't put it out, that's when I'm going to put this type of video out. And I ain't looked it up on YouTube, but I really, y'all, I don't feel like nobody else doing what I'm going to do with these videos. Like, they, they may do it to a certain degree, but I'm taking it to the highest degree. Like, mine's going to be raw. Mine's going to be real. You know what I'm saying? Mine gonna be 100. I digress, man. Y'all just be on the lookout for that. I don't want to give too many details away. But I think some of y'all gonna really fuck with it. Some of y'all might not. But some of y'all gonna really fuck with it. That's just what I thought. Now, we gonna get to today's video. And it's Tuesday. So y'all know who channel we going to. Mike from that chapter. Our boy Mike, man, just put this thing out like 30 minutes ago. And I'm thinking that he have his video set up to come out at 2 p.m. My time. Every Tuesday. So, maybe we can work that in. Because, you know, sometimes we watch them on Tuesday. Sometimes we watch them on Wednesdays. But if he putting them out at 2 o'clock every Tuesday, then I'm, I'm guaranteeing y'all that we're going to react to it and watch it together every Tuesday. I digress again, man. The title of the video, Lying to Police After Discovering a Disturbing Crime. That's one of the most fucked up things you can do, man, is lie to the police when you know it's a crime like murder or even a robbery, rape, like, you know what I'm saying? Especially if you ain't got nothing to do with it, then what the hell you lying to the police for? You don't want to be a snitch? I'm just going to say it straight up right now. I'll snitch on any motherfucker. To save my ass from going to motherfucking jail. I'm not going to prison for some shit I ain't do. But I don't know. I don't know how this story gonna turn out, man. But we finna see how it gonna turn out. But before we see how it gonna turn out, y'all know what y'all gotta do. Get whatever you may need. Get what you need. It's Tuesday and we back to that chapter, my people. Y'all got what y'all need? Y'all ready to go? Then let's fucking go. Hey you and welcome. My name is Mike, and in this little video, we are gonna we're gonna look at an absolutely bizarre tale that was, of course, no surprise. It, it takes us to Florida. Like where else at this point? Come on now. To date, it is still somewhat of a whodunit, even though the trial is is long, long over. Like there, there's still so many questions remain. You know, the who, the what, the why, the whole deal. It's kind of a big one. Though a jailbreak didn't make anyone look good, innocent or not, and though he remains that way in many people's eyes, in the eyes of the law, not so much. An oil heiress, a descendant of the Halliburton family, was found in the bath by her son in a horrific state. And oh, why did I lie to you? But I know I'm not wrong. Well, you are. No, I know I'm not. Consider it career change. I'm serious, Maybe. dude. You did a percent. No, I did. Yes, you did. A thousand ten percent sure did. Oh, what you Voluntarily s surrender right now. I don't want anything happening to him. The investigation began with, well, you know, where you think it would. The person who found her, and it hammered into that until new evidence came to light. Evidence which has been, like, disputed, and the whole, you know, he had no history of that sort of thing. So, I guess he does now, though, but it took two trials to come to fruition. I mean, the fact mm. that this happened in Florida should be a dead giveaway is this one, you know, that this one will be as weird as hell. It's it's twisting as all heck, and it's got more questions than it has answers. So you know what that means. Let's give it a go. Let's give it a go. Let's give it a go. 
I'll be crazy. Broward out. County. Or Bro Weird County. Ha ha ha. That's what one criminal defense attorney calls it. That's the setting for this video. Whew, Southern Florida, you know? It's a hot one down there in Fort Lauderdale. Home of many's at that chapter video. So you know what that means. I hope you do, because I don't. <laughs> Inland from Fort Lauderdale and the beaches lies a little place called Davy, not far from the Everglades, and there are countless man-eating alligators. It's home to approximately 100,000 people and is an upper-class affair, mansions and ranches and all that business. In one of them big old houses with the gates and the pool and the rooms and the whole thing resided, now listen up, Nan Yao Su, his wife Jill Halliburton Su, and their two children. There is 23-year-old Amanda and 20-year-old Justin. Nan Yao Su was, and still is, a distinguished professor at the University of Florida, where he worked on, works on, termites, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah. Why not? Is all I have to say. He didn't just work in it though, he is a he's a he is an authority on termites. So, you know, for all your, your termite questions, which I'm sure you have a lot of, he's he's your he's your guy. Nanya was married to Jill, had been for nigh on many years after they met in Japan, while she was studying abroad at Michigan State University. And he was studying at Kyoto Institute of Technology. Jill was born in California, born into the wealthy Halliburton family. It was her great uncle, Earl Halliburton, who founded the oil business. Now, they didn't actually do any drilling, they were like, oil processing. Something. Not the point of this video, so I don't care. Reading through the Halliburton Wikipedia, they're like, comically evil. We got the Iraq War, we got the Deepwater Horizon catastrophe, we got covering up sexual assaults, and we got putting dangerous chemicals in your drinking water. But, have you considered the stock price? Jill moved with the family to Michigan when she was 11 years of age, later moving with the husband to Hawaii, and finally Broward County, where she would have two kids. She was an artist, exhibiting her art at fairs all the time, and also she was a beloved person by everyone she met. She volunteered, she mentored, and she diligently raised two children. At the time of our story, 23-year-old Amanda, who was living in Kentucky at the time, and 20-year-old Justin. She would return to Michigan, Ann Arbor, every year for exhibitions, and as the kids grew, she began working with the blind. Wow. Now, all of this would come crashing down on the 8th of September, 2014. One day, after Jill and Nanyo, they returned from Malaysia. Uh, they had just been traveling. They were, they were frequent travelers. So they just been away to Malaysia, and literally the day after they came back. Someone took a squat on a fan. The day after they returned, what? you know, that morning, Nanya was up and at him. He was back into work, back at, back to, to work at the University of Florida in Fort Lauderdale. It's start of semester, hey, kids ain't gonna teach themselves about termites. Justin, he left the house himself at about 9.30 a.m. For, for work. Uh, Amanda, you know, the, the oldest child, the daughter, she, she worked uh, with equestrian stuff in Kentucky. And so, you know, after Justin left for work, Jill was alone in the house that day. Then. At around midday that day, uh, Nan Yao, you know, at the university, uh, on a break, on a break between classes, he decided to whip out, you know, an app on a computer, or maybe he did it on his phone. He looked at the, the Nest app. Now, Nest, I'm sure you all, you all know, you know, Google Nest, that's your home security system, cameras, all that sort of thing. So he decided to whip it out, check things, how things were going, you know, have a goo. Their house is a big one with, a, with numerous cameras all around the place, just to keep an eye on it. As he was kind of absentmindedly checking the home security Camera, he was shocked to see a man in his house wearing a ski mask. All not yet. Can y'all imagine that shit though? You just, <clears throat> excuse me. You just looking at your goddamn um security cameras while you at work or wherever. You can be at the damn store. You away from the house. And you just checking, you know, trying to check your house out. And you see a man in your damn house with a ski mask. I don't know if I'll call the police first or jump in my goddamn truck and take off to the house. I think I'll take off. I'll jump in my truck first and call the police later. And I'll be cocking something back on my way there. For real, man. But his wife there, though. That take it to another level. Woo! Yeah, I could tell was that he was young, he was thin, and he was white. But his, his face was obscured, and this man was walking around his home where his wife was alone disconnecting 
the cameras one by one. So Nanya then called his son, Justin, as in, hey, you know, because that's who he initially thought it was. What's going on? Are you pranking me? You know, what's the crack here? You know, gotcha. Well, when he called Justin, Justin replied he was studying at the local community college. So who's in the house? Uh-oh. Justin said he would go home and he would check what was going on because every time Nanya tried to call his wife, the phone would just ring out. Now, why neither of them called the police while allegedly, you know, seeing a strange man wearing a ski mask while 59-year-old Jill was alone in that house is the first of many questions we will have regarding this case. So yeah. Justin, he drove home, he booked it home, he arrived at the house about 15 minutes after his dad and he had called him. He parked in the garage, he walked past the sleeping dog uh, that was there and he began walking into the house and he noticed, he could see the wires sticking out from where all the home home cameras had been as in the hold on y'all that i called it and i one of y'all called it too that shit he just said about the sleeping dog something wrong with that i don't give a damn what kind of dog you got if a stranger in your house with a ski mask on your damn dog ain't gonna be laying down somewhere sleeping your dog gonna be barking, your dog gonna be hyper, your dog gonna be extra as fuck. So that right there is, if I was the police, if I was a detective and uh, that boy was telling me that story, that would really stick out to me. Because ain't no way to hell your damn dog sleeping while stranger in your fucking house. Let's go. The cameras had just been reefed off. Uh, their Nest cameras are USB cameras. They'd been reefed off and he didn't know where. He continued throughout the house and found pretty much all the cameras had been disconnected. Continuing through, he walked past his open bedroom door and saw his things had been rummaged through. Now Justin, big fan of hunting and fishing, he had many knives and a rifle, and he saw that his knife drawer had been snooped around. He then continued deeper into the house and as he did, he could hear water, water running from his parents' bathroom. Opening the door, he saw the bathtub was full of water. Red water. In the tub, his mother, Jill, she was floating there face down. In his complete Dang. state of, you know, understandable shock, he first called his dad, saying that he, that Jill had killed herself. His mother had, had done it to herself. His dad then told him, calmly, call the emergency services. Dial 911, which he, which he straight up did. This is that call. Call this emergency. Justin, are you with her right now? Evaluate that situation, that, that damn phone call, just that whole thing, real quick, y'all. Why in the hell you assume, assume that your mama killed herself? Why you think she committed suicide when your daddy just told you a damn stranger was walking around the damn house with a ski mask on? But th that's the first conclusion you come to. Oh, my mama stabbed herself, then jumped in the damn wall, tub with water running. Bruh, your storage is, it's him. He did it. <laughs> Let's just leave it at that. I know y'all been new and I've been new too, but I'm just tripping off the bullshit kind of story he putting together. You talking about your mama committed suicide. You got damn, what else? Uh, you talking about the damn dog was sleep while a stranger was in your house. Let's go. While on the phone with the police, he lifted his mother out of the tub to attempt chest compressions. But that was a no-go. It was then, again, still on the line with the emergency services that he noticed she had been bound and she had knife wounds all over her body. I don't know. I think it's, I don't know. It's a murder. I think. Is she got her hands are tied. Her hands are tied? When do we have her hands right now? Okay, and everything, you know what, oh my god, oh my god, I don't know if anyone's here, but, get me a rep for a 
Uh, if I told that no one else is there. Yeah. No, she was doing suicide. I'm sorry to that. I just went sorry I was doing with the camera. Don't take my mom. I'm sorry. Oh my god. Here's another question. Why would he immediately assume that his mother had stabbed herself all over and then thrown her own body into a bathtub? Wow. It's not an assumption to make. Like, why would she doing this to herself be the first thing that comes to your mind? But who knows how anybody would respond in such a, in that environment, in such a stretch, stressful situation. I have no idea how I would react to it. It's just, these are one of the many things that... Jill had been bound, hands bound, feet bound, and then someone had viciously attacked her with a knife. A knife that would later be revealed to be one of Justin's. Then she was put in the tub, faucet on. It did look like there had been a fight, struggle, things had been tossed around, and Jill had defensive wounds on her. The investigation into who had done this then began. Um, from the start, you know, the investigators were keeping father and son pretty close, if you know what I mean. At the entrance of the house, not the garage, which is how Justin entered, the police found a folding knife on the ground. It had traces of blood on it, possibly dropped by the killer as he fled the home. In the back, it seemed like they had found an entry point too. Whoever did this, that's likely how they got in. Or, it's what they wanted you to think. Hmm. The entry point was very tight for a grown adult. They also found the deactivated cameras, the alarm panel box in the bathtub, along with, when it was drained, a knife in there too. It was a decorative knife, like a... I don't know what. It's like a mad looking yoke anyway. The house had been rummaged through, but nothing was taken. It was odd. Odd from the start. Like the entire story and the scene. Kind of like a staged scene. Like, for example. Exactly, bro. I, like, bro, yo shit, this shit looking so staged, bro. Like, this shit is staged as fuck. And uh, what I was gonna say about goddamn. How in the hell, bro? You, um, a stranger, a robber, or whoever, gonna just walk in the house and know where all the cameras at to take them out. You know what I'm saying? How, who would know how to do that? Like, there gotta be somebody in your y'all family in a circle to know exactly where all the cameras at. I'm saying they might see some of them and snatching them out, snatching them out. But I feel like if you got enough cameras in your house, bro, it's going to be at least one that a stranger would just come in and know where it's at. And why in the hell this stranger rumbling through shit but ain't take nothing? It's him. Well, even to start, Nanio just so happened to be checking, you know, his, his home security system and he just happened to, to look at it at the exact moment when a guy was going around, probably as close to the camera as can be, looking right in it and deactivating the camera. Like, if he had checked it, Five seconds later, he wouldn't have seen this person. And how, how would the killer even know where the cameras were? And then why even cover up the cameras if you're already wearing a mask? Also, the home security camera, which which saw which is how Nanyo saw this guy deactivating the cameras? Well, didn't it just so happen that Nanyo's subscription had expired, which meant that he could watch the camera live, but he couldn't see any past events. It wasn't recording, it was only live streaming. Conveniently, Damn. it stopped recording two days prior to the murder. Fun fact Damn. for you folks, your boy over here actually worked at Fur Nesting Customer Service many years ago and we would get calls all the time of somebody saying, yeah, I've Nest security cameras, but I had a break in. And, you know, do you have the footage? And we'd, oh, your subscription, you don't have your subscription anymore. We don't have any footage for you. You can only view it live. We can't view past events. And obviously people would be furious, but they don't store footage if you don't have subscription for privacy reasons. So none of what Nanyo said he saw could be witnessed by anybody else. It was immediately deleted. The subscription was also quite expensive. It's a bit of a fucking ripoff, if you ask me. As you can tell, I love that job. Jill had been viciously murdered, stabbed to death, which is usually a crime of passion done by somebody close to the victim. If it was a burglary gone wrong, like why tie them up and stab them? I mean, you know, okay, if you're, if you're a burglar and you get caught during a, you know, while you're trying to steal shit, okay, like stabbing would just make sense, stabbing and running, but Tying up, stabbing, and then drowning them in the tub, filling them, putting them face down and filling it with water, just to be sure. Seems like a bit of an overreaction. Yeah. Seems very funky. And the family weren't all smiles and trips and all that. Uh, things were like just a little bit uncomfortable, let's say. Now, Nanyo had no reason to kill his wife. Yes, he was named uh, in his wife's will, you know, to get her stuff, but he was her husband, so of course he would be. 
but he himself was independently wealthy. His patent for termite traps was the big bill payer in the house. Jill, though a well-known surname, she didn't actually see much from the company, wasn't involved with it, and wasn't exactly getting big royalties. And their marriage of over 25 years, it was happy. He seemingly had no reason to murder her, plus he was in work at the time. That's the only thing I can think of. The only thing I can think of is, whoever did this, know where the security camera is. Because both of them being unplugged, <coughs> they paid that. They know this camera. Well, let me ask you, who, who knows where these security cameras My son. He's the only one? You, like, you guys don't have people over? Or you haven't talked to them? Okay. You have a large amount of valuables inside the house? No. Okay. You ever had any enemies, any problems with anybody? That if you ever had any kind of instance like this before, somebody trying to break into your home or yeah. anything like that? No. We lived in the house for 14 years. Never break in at all. Amanda, she was working with horses in Kentucky. She was immediately excluded so that just left justin the person who found her and now i'm just at a point of uh, now my head in my brain y'all i'm just like why why did you do this bro did you and your mom get in some type of crazy ass argument and you just just blew up and got that mad to the point where you murdered her or was this premeditated like why bro we know it's you but why See if we can find out. A lot of the stuff that we talked about earlier, the, you, the stuff you told us, doesn't make sense. What do you mean? The second we sat down and talked to you, you lied to us. About what? So you want to you start coming clean? This is your only <laughs> opportunity. Oh, what are you you, can you understand? Control. Your dad. What? What did I say to my dad? What? I, I, li I lied to my dad. I told him I was going to work. And maybe during the police questioning, Justin would change his story about where exactly he had been that very morning before when his dad even called him. So you told 911 she killed herself in the bathtub? That's what I thought. <coughs> she, thought. But she was already out. That's what I told my dad. The person Nanyo saw sounded exactly like Justin. A skinny, young, white guy. I mean, Nanyo even thought it was him. He just couldn't be sure because he was wearing a mask. Like, he called Justin thinking it was Justin joking around. I think it's a male. Okay. But the skinny. You know your dad's pretty sure that you're the one he saw in that cabin. Really? Yeah. Oh my god. You know black male or... Looks like the whites. Okay. It wasn't me. I'm not gonna calm down. I'm sorry. Describe you on that camera. What? Pretty much. My dad. Describe you. Yes. So much so that he—that's why he called you and said, "Man, are you playing a joke in front of that camera?" Because he knew it was you in front of that camera. With the stories he's telling us now, and no, more likely he will not be going home because it, it, he's. It, it, my partner said it's not making sense. There's too many inconsistencies with what he's saying. Now, Justin, growing up, was a popular kid in school, well liked, and a and a good kid. He worked part-time at the university as an assistant, no doubt helped by his dad. But he had academic issues, he had dropped out of college. He had moved home, and, well, his parents, high achievers coming from status families, just wanted him to do good. It's a lot of pressure on a young man like Justin, you know, when your parents are high achievers and have big names. Our lives have just been a lot worse since I moved back. We got into a lot of fights in between this and that, and so... That's why when I first saw her, I was like, why, why would you do, why could you do this to us? Like, why do you leave us? So I, I, first, I thought she was, I thought she committed suicide. So he had dropped out of college. He was attending community college, but his parents were seemingly quite disappointed. His mother especially was seemingly quite disappointed uh, with how he was getting on. He initially said uh, when his dad called that he was studying at the community college uh, where he was taking a couple classes. That's where he was when he got the phone, but he would later change his story and say he was sleeping in his car. At the at the Davy campus, why was he sleeping in his car? Was he pretending to go to to, to classes? He was just driving there and just not actually going. I don't know. And where were you? In my car. What were you doing in your car? <laughs> sleeping. Be honest with me. Did you stay in your car sleeping, or did you go to the library? I say that. Okay, I'm sorry. I said that too. You I know that too. Because I don't want to seem like a. Why, man? Oh, why did I lie to you? Then, you know, he said that when he arrived home, he didn't even check on his mom immediately. Which is kind of weird, because if you think you're hearing about something suspicious going on in your own house, your immediate thought would be, okay, I've got to check the person who I love dearly who is in that house. Instead, it seemed like he was kind of wandering around for a bit, going to his, his own room, checking out his own shit, before finally ending up in the bathroom. Which I didn't even think about that part, y'all. Now, that one part that slipped me, bruh. If I know my mom in this house and I seen a stranger on the camera, I'm busting in the house. Mama! 
Mama, mama. I'm, that's the first thing I'm doing as soon as I open the door. Man, cut that man's story. It, 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 it just getting worse and worse. Not to mention the fact that he actually admitted to the police, yeah, I was lying about that part. What he said, oh my God, why did I lie to y'all? But if, you, if your ad get caught one time lying to the police and you admit to it, the police ain't going to believe shit that you got to say after that. This is damn ridiculous. Let's go. Which was like the last thing he did. And why was his initial thought that it was self-inflicted? When it kind of seems like, kind of seems like, it was anything but. And remember, two of the knives found were Justin's, and he loved him some knives. He studied the blade. Supposedly, by what you're saying, they they went into your room specifically, got your knives, and I guess possibly used that to kill your mom, right? That's what you said. He also mentioned a turd knife. Things are not looking good for you, buddy. He said that when he arrived home, he had whipped out a knife for protection because he didn't know what was going on in the house. A house he was not racing around to make sure everybody was safe and then thought that his mother had done it to herself. He said that he brought a knife in with him, but after he found his mother, he went and he left it back in the car. What? I'm going to jail, aren't I? Yeah. Oh. For something I didn't even do. The police became like fucking straight off the bat became fairly sure of the theory that he had come home him and his mother they had fought over his work over his education over something and in a fit of rage he went and he grabbed the knife and he stabbed his mother to death i mean it did seem like a crime of passion that kind of made sense then he tried to make the whole thing look like a burglary it's like alexander jackson over here again before well my mom was murdered for god's sakes i found her dead I found her! I had to live with that! And you guys are- and you guys are thinking I did it? Yeah, yes. You didn't wake up saying, oh, I'm gonna kill my mom today. But when it happened, sh hit the fan, you really didn't- you were racing to cover this up to make it look like a robbery, and it was a- Why the hell would I murder my mom in the middle of this? <laughs> I- I don't see why- <laughs> I love my mommy! I want her to be alive! I want her to be alive! The police did not go easy on either of them. You know her ass didn't kill herself. Yeah. Okay, so then why would you tell that to my own No, no, I did, think she, I, I did think she killed herself. I thought she tied herself for trying to drown herself in the, in the tub. I, did right. I say that? No, that's not what you said. And I'm not going to tell you what you said. That's your fucking fault. But that's not what you said. This, this is going to be a it's lot of you it's trying it's to remember it's your it's own fucking no, lives. No, no, it's not, man. I'm, I, like I said, man, like... And that's going to be a lot harder for you. I don't you know, dude. Once I saw my mom's body, man, I don't you know. You know what it is? You thought you are fucking smarter than everybody else, and now you're trying to remember your own fucking lives, and you're eating. It's much harder to try to remember your lives. I'm so stressed right now, man. Like, I'm being... You should be. You fucked up. No, you didn't. No, I didn't. Bro, it's obvious you didn't. No, I didn't. So obvious. No, I didn't. You did it, and he fucked up trying to No, I didn't. No, I didn't. I didn't try covering up anything. I didn't try doing anything. I didn't just say shit. Imagine seeing your mother. I have. Dead. Yeah, I have. Like that. I've imagined it. Plenty over and over in here. Yeah. I got... I would not act not a fucking inkling like you did. You exactly. Hands up all you want. Dude, I didn't do you it. You agree with me. You agreed no. with me earlier. No, man. I thought I did what was right, man. I didn't do it. But ultimately, after 11 hours of interrogations, there was no breaking point, and they were let go. Once again, it should not be that long. Always ask for an attorney. So Justin's story was questionable. He, he was, his appearance was very similar to the person his dad allegedly saw in the footage, which nobody else could now see, conveniently. He would have known exactly where the cameras were to be able to disconnect them. He owned the murder weapons, and he was the person to find the victim. When you guys find out you're wrong, I hope you come and say sorry to me, man, or something. Justin. This, this is a horrible... No, no, this is a horrible... If, if I found out I was wrong, I'd seriously consider a career change. But I know I'm not wrong. Well, you are. No, I no, I'm not. consider a career change. I'm serious, Maybe. dude. I'm Maybe. serious. Maybe. I'm sorry, detective, but you're thinking wrong. And wrap me up to a polygraph machine right now, man. Now, just though he had also... This dude is so adamant that he ain't kill his mama like he is fighting that shit tooth to nails that he ain't do it to the point where i'm thinking he one of them habitual liars type people like the people who lie so goddamn much till they believe they own lies i believe this one this that guy i believe he one of them type people 
And why the hell he ain't got no shoes on? No, he not even no socks. Am I the only one who's been realizing that he got his feet out, his toes out? Why? What the hell going on with that? But for real, man, this dude might be one of them people who lie and actually believe their own lies. Lies. Let's go. So held a party in the house a couple of days before. So another idea was that maybe someone who attended, who had attended, attended that party knew where the knives were, knew where the, the, the cameras were, and knew that maybe there might be something worth stealing in this house. X, Y, Z. That's a whole other kettle of fish. But one thing that went hugely in favor of Justin was CCTV showing him driving into his community when he said he did. And this was after his dad called him asking him to go to the house. And that, my friends, seemingly, I mean, kind of confirmed that he couldn't have done it. Like he was where he said he was, which was not at the house when his mother was murdered. Heckin' heck. Justin would give the police the names of all his friends who had been at his house recently. All were questioned and DNA swabbed. Items at the scene also, you know, swabbed at DNA will nearly always be, you know, the kicker. That and phone records, right? Well, over a week, nine days to be specific, DNA came back with a match. Four shit found. Hmm. It matched with a complete stranger, someone the Sues had never met before. His name was Deonte Rosillas. He was unknown. Deonte kind of mirrored Justin in life just a little. Um, they were both 20 years old. They both grew up not too far from each other. But while Justin grew up, you know, in like an upper class, you know, life, private schools, vacations, all that sort of thing, Deonte didn't have it quite so easy. Deontay grew up precocious. He was ahead of the other kids, nicknamed Moochie because he loved to eat, and he also loved to read, write, and dream. He was the son of Shetravis, who had worked hard at Dollar General Wendy's for her son, and she later met Walking Rosillis, a Haitian immigrant and landscaper. He helped raise the boy for a time before Shetravis ended it. Deontay dreamed of working in real estate, buying houses, flipping them, and as a kid he'd pick mangoes and sell them on the corner. But by 16 years of age, he had dropped out of school and he began kind of hanging out with, you know, the wrong crowd, uh, which kind of then led to him becoming a burglar, essentially. They would go around burgling all these rich houses around the Fort Lauderdale area, and that then led to a series of juvenile arrests. Now, nothing violent, though. Never, He was never arrested for anything violent. Deontay is one of those people who really could have become anything if he hadn't fallen with, you know, troublemakers. Like, this this one article describes how he would spend thousands on diapers and wipes and baby food for single mothers, handing them out to those who needed a little help. I, time out, y'all. I know goddamn well that Deontay is not actually the uh, killer. Because I done been so adamant, so convinced, just like them that I ain't the only one. Damn police was, uh, they was adamant that it was, uh, what is his name, Justin? Whoever son name is, they were just as adamant as me. And I know some of y'all out there been really thinking it was him. Was it really his friend? And he was just, because look at the title. Lying to police after discovering a disturbing crime. Was all uh, the, the the little boy just the, the son just lying to actually cover up for Deontay this whole time? Boy, Mike got me if this gonna be the case. I don't know which way we're going with this one now. But let's see. And so when he became chief suspect in the murder of Jill Halbert and Sue, everybody who knew him said no, no, no way, no. The knife found outside the home had Deontay's DNA on it. His DNA was already in the system as he had committed several burglaries in these sort of upscale communities. And he was charged with first degree murder. Wow. Now, what happened didn't really make sense. I mean, okay, he, he had a history of burglaries, he was a burglar, fine. Okay, that part I guess makes sense. It's everything else. Nothing was stolen in the house and Jill had been violently murdered. She had been bound, stabbed to death, and then thrown in a bathtub with the faucet on. And Deontay had no history of being violent, ever, ever. And this was a horrific act. If he had been, you know, caught in the process of robbing the place, maybe he thought that nobody was there. Maybe he'd been watching the house for a time, and maybe he thought, um, you know, the Sioux were still in Malaysia, right? 
Um, but, I mean, if he had been caught, okay, he would just run out of the house, you would think, right? Or slash to try and just get away. But what was done to Jill, if you were caught mid-burglarizing someone, was a little tad bit of an overreaction. So the whole thing kind of didn't really make sense, even though his DNA was right there. But it proceeded, even though it was kind of like... What the fuck? I want to talk to you about some burglars. What about it, Well, that's what we're talking to you, you know, you got to read these rights. You don't want to talk to me? I don't I don't know what's going on, so... Okay, no problem. You're going to be charged with first-degree murder. Well, well first... First-degree murder, okay? What, what am I being charged with first-degree murder for? Okay. Can't talk to you, so... What? And I feel like Deontay fucked up then. Now, it's all right. Is everybody right? So, if you, you don't want to talk to the police about the shit, just, I want to get me a lawyer, and then you got the right to do that. But, brah, you should talk to these damn police. Because, it, 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 either, but, both of these dudes got to be putting on a good ass act. The son and him. Because he looked shocked, like, what? First degree murder? And if he innocent, he ain't know nothing about this shit. Until now. And that was how they, if I were him now, I would pull them police be like, pull back and they're like, nah, fuck that, fuck that. I want to talk. I want to talk. Because I, I first degree murder, what y'all talking about? If he innocent. I don't know if he fucking innocent or not. What the fuck y'all think? I wonder. Let's go. What the fuck? <laughs> you don't want charges, huh? Fuck that's it. Can you tell me? I don't know what's going on. Whatever you guys doing, the turn is on. However, in July 2016, uh, things would take a <sighs> unexpected turn. He was in court, a regularly scheduled appearance, when he somehow managed to book it out of the courtroom and escape the courthouse. What the fuck? What? He had managed to escape his shackles and shit and run unmolested. All the way out of the courthouse to a waiting car, and then they were gone. It turned out that Deontay had been speaking in code to his girlfriend, and also two other women who also considered themselves to be his girlfriend. Awkward. And he had them like organize everything, get clothes from, all of that, have the car ready and waiting, and what exact route they would take out of here. He had one inmate loosen his chest chain, or whatever you call it. And then, while in courtroom, he had another inmate loosen his cuffs with a key Deontay had stolen off a deputy about a month before. And then, when sitting, he unlatched himself and he bolted. Once he was out, rewards were offered, it ultimately reaching 50 grand. The hunt was on, rumors abounded, and the police spoke to every single person they knew, he knew. The news of accused killer Deontay Rosales' escape from the Broward County Courthouse came as a surprise to everyone Friday morning, possibly most of all to his attorney Don Williams, who was late to court because of traffic. I was on my way to court. We had a major hearing schedule in, uh, in his case regarding the, uh, app uh, the applicability of the death penalty. When Rosales took off, the hearing never happened. My advice to him would voluntarily s surrender right now. I don't want anything happening to him, and I don't want anything happening to any uh, innocent third person. However, the community was not helpful, uh, as you can imagine. Many did not think he had done it at all, so when he was on the run now, he was kind of like like an outlaw, right? An outlaw hero who is now on the run. I mean, there were songs written about him. 22-year-old murder suspect down to Rosales, an escaped inmate from the Broward County Jail, was there for a hearing on the fourth floor when he escaped from custody as he was being taken out of his handcuffs. Hey, from right here, then don't come. No, no. Where I'm from, them just go down. If them crack a slab, boy, you better hide. Or better yet, just run. Say go. Run, Mooch. Run. Go. Run, run. run Mooch. After six days, he was eventually found. Tips resulting from the 50 grand reward helping out. He was found at a Days Inn in West Palm Beach. He I don't know why the fuck he thought he was going to get away when, uh, when them police got down, give out talking about a $50,000 reward. Oh, somebody going to end up telling on your ass, bruh. Your ass better get out the state, delete your number, delete your Facebook, do all that. Because you stay up in that community and you think these people going to protect you. Oh, boy, when they hear $50,000... Somebody gonna snitch. He was locked down uh, when he when he was returned to to the prison. But it's honestly pretty funny because 
went back and he would write a letter saying, kind of, sorry about all that, you know, sorry for kind of escaping, doing a, doing a prison break. But the reason I did it, and I had a real good reason, folks, was that I had to solve my own case. It's like the fugitive. He had to solve the, uh, the, the murder of Jill. He could only do it himself. This is a portion of a letter he wrote to the judge. Your Honor, I do not wish to waste your time, so I will get straight to the point. I want to apologize for escaping from your courtroom. Though my actions are not excusable, at the time I did what I felt was in my best interest. As you are aware, I have been incarcerated close to two full years. I tried to appeal to everyone to prove to them I was innocent, but my voice went unheard. I just asked for you to please judge me fairly. When I escaped, my whole reason was to gather enough info on my case to prove my innocence. As you can see, I didn't commit any crimes, hurt anyone, or go far. It turned out he'd just gone to a motel, uh, like, you know, in West Palm Beach, and he'd been eating pizza and watching porn for about a week. That's, that's probably what I would do too, to be honest. Hello, my name is Darren Shaver Jealous. By now, a lot of people know who I am. I am innocent. I never committed murder a day in my life. Whether you believe me or not, you are all entitled to your own opinion. You tell me if you have been placed in jail for a crime you know nothing about or never committed when you sit in jail. Let me ask this for you logically. No, there were a sketch is trying to kill me by lethal injection. I don't know if you ever witnessed it happen. You should go to YouTube or read up on it. My voice was not heard when I pleaded my innocence. It went overlooked. Over the years, there would be protests, there would be rallies, there would be billboards demanding his freedom from what they argued was a crime he did not commit. His trial finally went ahead in 2021 for the murder of Jill, Deontay pleading not guilty. Now, Deontay's DNA was found on a knife, uh, on the entry point, and on a belt. His DNA was not found literally anywhere else. His DNA was not found on her body. His DNA was not found in the bathtub or on the faucets where you think it would be, or even on the other knife that was in in the tub with her, the, the crazy looking one. And around this time, DNA processing came under scrutiny. A former analyst accused the Brower County Sheriff's Office of falsely claiming certain pieces of DNA evidence were conclusive when they most certainly were not. And later, the state's attorney's office would reopen a number of cases based on DNA evidence. That's what the defense was going with. Faulty DNA. Um, you know, that was the only kind of real piece of evidence they had against him. And that could have gotten there from a million different ways. It could have been transferred. Transfer DNA. It could have happened in the lab with transferring his DNA to the evidence accidentally. Somehow. God only knows. The scene itself doesn't make sense. So why should the DNA? After five days, the jury came back with a verdict of manslaughter. Not murder. We the jury find as follows as the defendant. The voluntary result is in this case. The defendant is guilty of the lesser included crime of manslaughter. But when asked by the judge, one juror, the four person, she said it was not her verdict. That it should have been first degree murder. Is this is your verdict? No. She would later say, and she herself was, was an Afro uh, Latino woman. She would later say that uh, the jurors, a lot of jurors, didn't want to convict him of first degree murder because he was a black man, and they just couldn't do it with their with their conscience, or they just couldn't send him away like that. We just need to follow the law as they instructed us to do, and not put our emotions um, into this. But one of the jurors charged with deciding the fate of accused murderer Deontay Rizilla says that's exactly what happened in the jury room. The trial ended this week with a hung jury, and the four-person says three jurors were unwilling to convict Rizilla based on his race. They said, um, I don't want to send a young black male to jail for the rest of their life or have them get the death sentence. And so it resulted in a mistrial. Deontay would go on trial once again in 2022. The prosecution said he broke in, and it was Jill who had tried to escape. Like, usually you would think in a burglary, the burglar would be the one to try and book it before she called the cops, but the prosecution was saying no. He broke in, Jill tried to run, he dragged her back in, he bound her, he stabbed her to death, and he... Well. It also came out during the trial that he had a phone smuggled into his jail cell, and was contacting people to help him formulate an alibi for him the day of the murder. The phone was bugged. At the end of the trial, uh, Deonta this time was found guilty of first-degree murder. Because I'm back, I'm back to the point of, I don't believe it was him. I believe this shit is just in the ass, man. 
I'm sorry, bro. That's just who I believe it is. I don't know about y'all, but that's just who I believe it is. Dante Rizzolas in this case. The defendant is guilty of murder in the first degree. Deontay spoke at his sentencing, and he still denied killing Jill. He was sentenced to life in prison with no possibility of parole. I would never take a wife from her husband. I would never take a mother from my child. They alleged 25 times Mrs. Superstar. That's beyond my comprehension. I don't possess the hate, rage inside my heart to commit such a heinous crime. They can hook me up to a polygraph test at any given time. Ask me any question they wish. And my answer will remain the same. I did not kill Mrs. Sue. And that's all I have to say. And to my family, I love y'all. I don't want y'all. Don't cry for me. No matter what I gotta go through, do it. And that's the end of this case, a very <laughs> twisted one. A lot of questions, yes, uh, a few, like did he do it well? I don't know, I'm sure so many people watching this will be fairly sure he did it. I mean, the evidence is pretty damning, but then at the same time, there's just so many weird things about this case, it just doesn't make sense from any real angle. At the end of the day, you know, the evidence saying he did do it is stronger than the evidence saying he didn't do it. As usual, please let me know your thoughts on this very twisted. What the fuck? That's how we gonna end this one, y'all? Oh my god, bro. I thought... I honestly thought that uh, Justin and I was gonna end up getting caught up for the shit. Man, I'm sorry, y'all. This is just my verdict. I don't think that man the one who did that shit. They went off a couple of evidence of DNA. I, Justin did that shit, y'all. I'm sorry, man. Now, some of y'all might disagree with me 100% and y'all really think Deontay did it. But it's just, come on, bro. It's too many damn just uh, coincidences and crazy shit that's happening. Like, dude... First of all, your damn daddy thought it was you on the camera. And your skin way lighter than Deontay. That first of all, that's the, the easy one. Yeah, every time about the damn dog came, you, you walked in there and the dog was sleep. That dog would not be sleep like ain't shit happening in that damn house. Or was happening in that house. What else, goddamn? Man, it's so much shit, y'all. I'm sorry, bro. I just think it was him, man. I can't even think of the other goddamn bullshit that the spewed out of his mouth. The fucking, uh, talking about you thought your mama committed suicide. Getting caught up in lies by the police. But then later on saying, oh, what I had told you? Oh, I'm so sorry I lied to you about that. That's some bullshit, man. I'm getting mad now because I'm, 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 I I'm, done went from believing 100% that it was him so now I'm at a thousand, and in a couple more seconds, I'll be at a million percent sure that that was Justin, man. I'm sorry, y'all. Fuck that shit. Hell no, man. Hell no. I just honestly, I don't know, man. I don't fucking know. This shit was weird, and it was good. <laughs> Another great video by our boy Mike, man. Hey, gonna let y'all get up out of this bitch. You know I can go on and on, so I'm gonna stop now. Appreciate y'all coming back. Fuck with me. Come on back again tomorrow. And I got a couple more things to say. Love, peace, and happiness. Stay safe. Don't stop. Keep going. Yeah.